The inchworm was inching his way along the perimeter of a leaf whenever he was spotted by a mathematician. Mathematicians have a way of simplifying things. So whenever the mathematician looked at the inchworm, this is what he saw. Six squares in this pattern. And the mathematician thought, I can look at all animals that I meet and I can remember them and categorize them in my head based on their square pattern. So he kept on going on his walk and he came across a cat. How am I going to simplify that cat? thought the mathematician. And this is what he decided upon. Now there was one problem with this technique, and that was that he remembered a polar bear sitting up properly, and that polar bear had height 4. But whenever he came back to see the polar bear again, the polar bear was lolling on the ground and only at height two. So he thought, oh, I can't remember polar bears in two different ways, so I'm not going to remember them whenever they're sitting up. I'm going to remember them whenever they're lolling about like this. And I'm going to remember them in my brain, all animals. I'm going to remember them as if they're lazy, as if they're lying down, as if their height is less than or equal to their width. And the second way that I'm going to remember them is based on their perimeter. So what's the perimeter of this polar bear? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So the perimeter of the polar bear is fourteen. The height is two. Let me put that in a cage, in a zoo, in my brain. So uh, there's where the polar bear goes, in a cage with other animals of height 2 and perimeter 14. Where does the inchworm go? Uh, the inchworm goes there too. And coincidentally, the cat also fits on that page. I want you to find, get your students to find a whole bunch of other animals, all with six squares or all with area six, and I want you to get them to put them into this zoo. And they have to be in the right cages. So here are all of the animals that are possible. And the children not only must discover the animals, they must name them. So they must name, for example, is this a goldfish or is it a clam? And so they have to come up with their, their own ideas and uh, for, for the names. Whenever I last gave this student, gave this problem to, to students in grade three, I had a very interesting student come up to me. She said, it's impossible for animals to go into these two areas. And I said, yes. Uh, can you find another area for which that's true? And she came back to me a minute later and said, it's impossible for them to go into here too. I said, you're right. What great thinking. That's exactly what I'm, I'm looking for in my top students. Gabrielle Galvez uh, came with an interesting, she, she was a teacher of grade fours, and she came up with a, a very interesting problem. She asked the students something that was impossible to solve. She asked them to find an animal of perimeter 13. I love giving impossible problems and keeping a straight face. Kids can get into great, deep mathematics for their age, uh, thinking about impossible problems. So, perimeter 13. Why is there not a perimeter 13 uh, cage here? Another mathematician decided to arrange animals in his head in a different way. So, he wanted to go out and look for all animals with perimeter 12, and he wanted to then organize them according to their area and their height. So let's see all of the animals. Again, your students should name the animals and should be able to find where they go, um, in which cage they go into in this zoo. Uh, the same girl who uh, 
who, who found the spaces that could not be, the cages that could not be filled, again found cages that could not be filled here. Now let's look at uh, a different problem and this might only be for the kids who are really motivated but that might be quite a few and we'll uh, have them come up with their own idea for a cage to hold animals whenever you go out and find them with uh, triangles. So here we have perimeter, how much is the perimeter here? It's going to be perimeter 14 again. So I'm not this time going to name the uh, what cages I'm going to make for my zoo. I'm going to leave that up to your kids and uh, this might be a good homework assignment for just those kids who are interested in finding a certain set of animals, placing them in their zoo that they create.